water. We've just, uh, well, we just hooked this fish. It's probably a couple of metres from, from where all this water is sort of gushing in. So quite often you'll get your biggest fish right at the head of the pool. So uh, we've got this little one, like a rainbow, which like the, the fast currents, uh, but it could well be a bigger fish just up ahead of it. So it pays to fish, again, on a grid system, every little bit of that grid, particularly at the head of the pool. And just got a little one there just again on the on the nymph so quite often you you might get uh, some some fish congregating the right water temperature or the right food so you've got to keep moving until you find that spot and you might come across a few of them again just great I mean it's not going to be huge again but on little gear you, you, you taper it to it I mean you you don't bring out a snapper rod to catch you know whiting you, you, you use it like a light little fly rod on these lovely little fish, and it, it's it's an each money each money bet, so it, it, uh, a great great setup to use. Sort of staying a bit deeper, this one. He might be a rainbow, or it might be a brown rather than a rainbow, like the other. I think it always pays to use a net. Um, sometimes you, you get the feeling that they're small fish. You should just grab them or drag them up the bank. But what happens? A little fish like this is going to bash himself around. Uh, quite often, you know, can damage his eyes or his gills as he's bouncing around on the rocks. So uh, we find it much better to use a good quality net. This is a little McLean's one where you can actually weigh them. We might not need to weigh this one, but uh, a good knotless mesh. So it's not going to harm the fish uh, and we can control him in here, get the hook out, get a photo, get whatever you need to do and put him back in the water without him bouncing along on the rocks. They're made to be, uh, fish are made to be in the water. So we'll try and keep them in there as often as we can. Lovely little brown, just taking the nymph right on his nose on there. And, that, and that's a typical uh, Australian river fish. That's the sort of size you're going to get. You might get you know, double that, uh, you might get half that, but uh, that's what we're aiming for. Fish like that in a pristine environment like this makes it worth all the trouble. That hook out and then we can get him back in the water. So this is what we're trying to imitate with our little uh, brown nymph. With it, we're using a gold bead, just about the same sort of size as that gold bead, because the water is a little discoloured. It'll attract the fish's attention, and uh, I'll take him. So that's a little mayfly nymph there. And that's why I think it's been working so well, because there's quite a few of that sort of size nymphs around. So uh, we've used a 16, and it's worked well for us today. When he just got off, but uh, nice little one come up and smack the dry, the little stimulator there, just in the shallow water. So again, this is our main area where the main current is and the main bubble line. But don't be afraid to throw some cast over into this shallow water, and uh, that's going to happen there. There's going to be fish all through it there, so uh, pays to just cast in every little part. We've got a great little pool and uh, we're just working our way up there and uh, no sooner had um, Ed just turned off the camera to get a different angle and he took the nymph again. So the nymph's proving pretty successful on the, uh, on the water today. Without that sun, we're not getting the, the insect activity and uh, 
they're feeding down deeper on the nymphs. I'll just get this one in the net. Just a nice little rainbow, just slightly bigger than the, uh, the previous rainbow we got. I'll bring him over to get a closer look. It's a nice little rainbow. They're very aggressive rainbows too, probably a little more curious than the, the browns and they, they tend to uh, yeah, eat first, ask questions later. Just get that nymph out and get him back in the water. Forceps are a great little tool, all you need to do is lock onto your fly like that and simply pull it the other way and uh, you get less harm to the fish and you get the fly out much, much quicker. And always when you're going to release a fish, you hold it upstream, it'll get uh, the water, will run through its gills which gives it its oxygen and bang, away he goes. little one there. Again just uh, working our way up. There's a nice little rod uh, rock in the water there and we're just casting up and letting it drift back down. You know just a little fish again but as soon as they take that's what you do it for you, you know to get the take I mean it's not the size you know size isn't always important um, you know even a lovely little fish like this just as to get it to take something that you, you've perhaps tied yourself is um, all worthwhile. And a lovely little uh, rainbow again. Get him back in. He'll be there for you too. So we've had a couple of hours on this river, um, which it's been good. Uh, again, as we've said, without the sun, it's been a little hard going. We're going to probably go a little bit more towards Yieldon, see if we can find a slightly bigger river and uh, show you how to fish that a little differently to the way you target fish in here.